Hi, today we're going to discuss how to find domain of a function algebraically. So you are going to be given a function and you will need to be able to determine what values of x you can use. So when we talk about the domain, we're discussing what uh, values of independent variable, a lot of times it's x, we are allowed to use. So if you look at this function, the question is always going to be the same. Can I use any value of x? And if you look at this, yeah, absolutely, you can make x anything you want. You can always take a number multiplied by 3 and then subtract 4. It will give you something. So the domain here is going to be all real numbers since you can use any number. What about this one? So here we got x squared minus 4x plus 3. Some of these functions may look familiar. So what is the domain here? Again, we can use any value of x. There's absolutely no restriction why we cannot use a specific value. So it's also going to be all real numbers of negative infinity to infinity. The same thing happens here. Please note I use a different variable here. It does not change anything. We still look at our independent variable, which in this case is t. So it's going to be negative infinity to infinity as well. So this is pretty basic. Let's take a look at this. So is it sometimes not going to be all real numbers? Absolutely. So what are the problems that you could potentially have? One of the problems is division. So remember, you cannot divide by zero. So we cannot divide by zero, then every time you see division, you should be concerned. But I want to show you this really quick. We divide it here, but it's four. Four is a constant, so there's no problem here. But here we have a variable. So we can't make, if x plus four is going to equal zero, we're going to have a problem. That means x does not equal negative 4. We cannot allow for negative 4 to be used. So when we write the domain here, we're going to exclude negative 4. All the other values are good. So we're going to have to go from negative infinity to negative 4, open, and then union, and then go from negative 4 to infinity. So any value except negative 4 is good here. Um, by the way, a common mistake. The numerator does not concern us. If we get zero in the numerator, that's fine. Absolutely no problem. So here, what we want, we want x squared plus nine not to, I'm sorry, x squared minus nine not to equal zero. Uh, I'm not gonna go through solving this inequality. You are going to get two values. X cannot equal plus or minus three. Okay, so as long as x is not positive three or negative three, you're fine. So for our domain, it's going to be negative infinity to negative 3. And we're going to unite it with negative 3 to 3. And we're going to unite it with 3 to infinity. Okay, example 6. I want you to take a good look at this. Uh, it's a common mistake. So x squared plus 4 is what we have in the denominator. We're looking for real values that could possibly make the denominator zero. And you can make x squared plus 4, if you set it equal to zero, this equation does not have any real solutions. It does have some complex solutions, but we're not interested. We're interested in real solutions. So no real zeros. And that means that uh, even though we divide and there is x on the bottom, you do not have any problems because you cannot make x squared plus 4 equal zero with any real value of x. So the domain here is going to be all real numbers. It's a very common mistake. Sometimes students become very creative and they come up with some crazy ideas. That's not true in this case. There's no real number that's going to make it zero. Okay, uh, what's the love possibility? Is it always division? No, you also have square roots. So with the square root, you want to remember that the expression under the square root to make the whole thing real we want it to be non-negative. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, what I want is I want x minus 3 to be greater than or equal to 0. As long as radicand is not negative here, we are not going to have any problems. So that means x is greater than or equal to 3. And the domain here is going to be 3 included to infinity. Do the same thing here. 3 minus 5t Please note I'm using t, doesn't change anything. You want it to be greater than or equal to 0. So we have negative 5t greater than or equal to negative 3. That means t is less than or equal to, you're dividing by negative 5, negative 3 fifth. I'm sorry, positive 3 fifth. So in this case, the domain is going to be from negative infinity to 3 fifth included. Take a look at example 9. 
you are, we're trying to find the domain here. We do have a square root, but x squared plus 16, what do we know about that? It's always going to be positive, for sure. It can't even equal z uh, 0. As a matter of fact, the lowest value is going to have a 16. So we don't have any uh, reasons for concerns here, and the domain is going to be all real numbers. So my point so far with a couple examples that I showed you is that I want you to understand not every time you see division it means you're going to be having any problems or not every time you have a square root you're going to have any problems. Alright, now we're going to make some combinations. So what happens when you have exp uh, functions like this, like example 10? So we have two things here. Uh, on, on top we want x plus uh, minus 5 to be greater than or equal to 0. On the bottom we want x plus 4 not to equal 0 because we don't want to divide by 0. So the numerator gives us x is greater than or equal to 5 and we want to make sure x is not equal negative 4. But negative, this already takes care of this because if x is greater than 5 this is not going to happen, right? Because if x is greater than or equal to 5, you cannot have 0 on the bottom because that's only going to happen when x is negative 4. So the domain here is going to be 5 to infinity. What about 11? So 11 has a square root, so we want x minus 9 greater than or, well, it cannot equal 0 because if this was not on the bottom, it would, it would be okay for x minus 9 to equal 0. But since it's on, on the bottom, we cannot divide by 0, so x minus 9 has to be strictly positive, which means x is greater than 9. And the domain here is going to be 9 open to infinity. And our last example here, we're going to take a look at this one. So what do we want here? It's very similar to what we saw in problem 10. Uh, we want t plus 3 to be greater than or equal to 0, and we want to make sure that t minus 1 does not equal 0. This here gives us t is greater than or equal to negative 3, and this tells us that x cannot equal 1. So this time, 1 actually falls on this interval, right? Because 1 is, on the, one is greater than negative 3. So the way we're going to have to write the domain here is we're going to have to take care of that 1. So the domain is going to be, we're going to start at negative 3, we're going to have to go to 1, we're going to have to break at 1, and then a union, and then from 1 to infinity. Okay? And then you got the answer. I hope this helps.